Let's look a little bit quick at cycles of concentration because it's in the code and for the first time. And a lot of engineers and people have never really dealt with this. They've heard about cycles of concentration at Kudman Tower. In other words, as I evaporate this water off in a tower, what I call the rocks stay behind. So sooner or later, I've got to have some blowdown water going on down the drain or my tower is going to cake up as one great big rock. And this is determined by the cycles of concentration. So what I like to try to do here real quick is if you people have never really looked at cycles, it gets you to understand what it is. Here's a formula for it. And it's based on the blowdown rate of the tower uh, versus the evaporation rate. And if the, if the blowdown rate is equal to the evaporation rate, you've got two cycles of concentration. So let's just walk through this real quick. You've got a formula, but see if you can understand a little quick rock story of what cycles are, because you need to begin to think about this because the code for the first time is specifying the cycles of concentration on your Kuban Tower, and you're going to have to deal with this. When I get my Kuban Tower going to the left-hand side, I've got all this water in there. Let's just take all these solids. Just make it one big rock, okay? So we got one cycle of concentration when we start off. We've got 1,000 gallons of water in our tower. When we evaporate that water down, we've got one rock. Okay, great. That's good. But when we evaporate that 1,000 gallons of water down to one rock, what are we going to do with our cooling tower? We're going to make up another 1,000 gallons of water. And when that other 1,000 gallons of water comes in, it brings another rock. And I've now got two cycles of concentration. I've got two rocks and 1,000 gallons of water. I evaporate that 1,000 gallons of water down again in my cooling tower. My two rocks stay behind. And what do you do? You bring another 1,000 gallons of water in with another rock. I've got three cycles of concentration of three rocks in 1,000 gallons of water. If I evaporate that 1,000 gallons of water all the way down to the bottom, my three rocks are still there in that tower. But what are you going to do? You're going to bring in another 1,000 gallons of water. And what comes with it? Another rock. And now you've got four cycles of concentration or four rocks. That concentration is that simple. I'm just trying to get you to understand what happens in the process. As you can see, if you don't have some extra makeup water, you're going to wind up with a tower full of rocks. Sooner or later, you just can't keep going. So we got to learn to deal with cycles of concentration. Here's a quickie chart to make the point to you. This is basically a thousand ton blowdown example of evaporation and blowdown and total makeup water required to a tower based on the cycles of concentration. Ladies and gentlemen, water usage in this country is becoming more critical. Whether you like it or not, we're going to be dealing with this for a long time to come, and the codes are going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. The old days of just blowing a tower down, not paying any attention to how much water I got. You're going to have to have some system to control the cycles to manage and save as much water as possible. Reasonable cycles for concentration in Kuban Tower is probably four. Let's just get a quick example of what's going on. But most of the towers I've seen up recently, people have just had a manual valve blowing them down and with nobody looking at the actual conductivity of the, of the amount of solids in the tower. So here we go. If 100 ton tower, the evaporation rate required 15 pounds roughly per ton. For 100 tons, it stays constant. So 180 gallons per hour across the top, all the way to the 10 cycles on the right. So this is a plot of the makeup water required in gallons per hour versus cycles of concentration. And the message is, at two cycles of concentration, remember the evaporation rate 180 gallons per hour is exactly equal to the blowdown rate 180 gallons per hour. Or we need 360 gallons per hour on a 100 ton load to maintain two cycles of concentration. Now as I increase the cycles of concentration, what happens to the total usage of water? Notice the evaporation rate has to stay the same. Cooling towers need 15 pounds of water pretty much per ton evaporated to keep them working. That's a fixed comp. So the 180 gallons per hour evaporation rate stays the same. But as I increase the concentration, as I increase the number of rocks, the amount of water I'm blowing down goes down. So at four cycles of concentration, I'm blowing down 60 gallons per hour. My evaporation is still the same. My total water usage is 240. All the way out to 10 cycles of concentration. The evaporation rate is still 180 gallons per hour. The 
blow down is down to 20. So I've really can, got a lot of rocks. I'm 10 cycles of concentration up to 10 rocks. What are you seeing? The total water usage is flattening out. The amount of water you save by increasing the cycle of concentrations goes way down as you increase it. In other words, going from 2 to 4, you save a lot of water. Going from 4 to 10, you save very little water. So to get way out to the high levels of cycles of concentration doesn't make a lot of sense because it's hard to do. You're living on the edge. It's hard to maintain those high levels of cycles of concentration. And your payback and the amount of water you save is not there. So what are reasonable cycles of concentrations to specify? Good question. Here's, here's an answer for you. Ash rays 99.1, so-called green building code, the one the Army Corps of Engineers adopted, the one a lot of cities are adopting, you will see a lot more of, defines the cycles of concentration. It's the first time I've been able to find in ASHRAE any kind of code or standard recommendation on cycles of concentration. But here it is. Take a look. If you've got less than 200 parts per million of solids or rocks in your water, minimum five cycles of concentration. If you're, if you're out west, you've got hard water, and you're over 200 parts per million, three and a half cycles would be a concentration. The point is, you're going to be asked to control your blowdown rates based on cycles of concentration. Here's another little comment from this ASHRAE 189.1. And you see you're going to have to have some conductivity, conductivity controls, and that's going to be a given you're going to have to do. But look at item C. Look at item C. Any condensate from air conditioning units over 65,000 BTUs, that's five and a half tons. You've got to collect it and reuse it. Now, this is, this is ASHRAE 189.1, excuse me, the Green Building Code, the one the Army Corps of Engineers has already adopted. A lot of cities have adopted this. It's not in 90.1, 189.1, but it's coming. And I don't, if you want to play with this, you need to understand it, but it's telling you if you want to build a building per the Green Building Code, which a lot of people are doing, well, a lot of people are doing this, you're going to have to do this. You, what are you going to do with that kind of thing? So it's interesting comment any cooling coil in your building over five and a half tons, you've got to collect that condensate and reuse it. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.